we're Jack Rabbit Go. We work out here in the California high desert. We are a premier high-speed internet service. We start out in Yucca Valley. We serve Joshua Tree, Homestead Valley, and the front side of 29 Palms. When we found out that there were issues here with connectivity, reliability, and specifically also pricing, uh, we came out here to kind of make it a better place. One of the challenges for us was building out that trust with a community who wasn't trusting of internet, right? Because they've been disappointed so many different times. When we were using buy cells, for the most part, we were delivering speeds between somewhere between 30 to 70 megabits a second. And which is fine, you know, for a community that's paying hundreds of dollars sometimes for 10 megabits, right? It was a, it was a welcome breath of fresh air. But even as great as that equipment is, it has its limitations. It wasn't necessarily solving our connectivity problem, or at least our infrastructure expansion problem, because what was happening is we would have to build out these tower sites over and over and over in terms of repetition. Each of those in an area like this require special licensing, special permitting. You know, you have to really work with the local municipality to get the approval to do something like that. We needed more. We needed something stronger. We needed to deliver those high speeds over the air because, you know, the competition is fiber. And fiber always says, oh, well, we have 300 or 500 in some areas of gig. That's not going to happen out here, but, you know, the competition's fierce. We quickly realized our growth was going to be stunted. We were limited by range and also by speed. And so we got together and we said, you know what? We're really committed to this company. We want this company to be around a long time. So we're going to find the best and we're going to go back to what we think the best is and we're going to go for it. And that's what we did. We got Tron up on the tower and pretty quickly, I wanted to immediately get rid of all the old equipment that we have because the additional cost basically pays for itself in headaches. We have no headaches with the Tron equipment. Once it's installed, it works great, always works great. And plus with the speeds we're delivering with Toronto, I really feel like we're gonna be future proof where I know that a lot of these customers we're installing, they're gonna end up being customers for a really long time. So we needed a solution and Toronto was that solution. And you know, in comparison with Toronto, we've been able to get somewhere between 100 to 400 megabits a second. It's reliable, high speed, and gives you range, which basically reduces the need to have to build out all this necessary infrastructure. And it kind of keeps it high and tight, right? So that we can deliver these to the community. And so far it's been amazing. I mean, we can't even keep these things off the shelf. I had Spectrum Internet. <laughs> It was inconsistent, expensive, and I, customer service was not very friendly. I switched to Jackrabbit Go. I am stoked with the service. It's been consistent. I do all kinds of things on the internet. I watch TV, of course, but in my business life, I use it for my PR job. I am a DJ on luxuriamusic.com. I have a show Wednesday, 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific, called Over Under Sideways Down. I do my show here, upload it to the station, no problem whatsoever. I also use the internet for my band, Jessica Von Rabbit, for all of our promotion and video work. I would recommend Jack Rabbit go to everybody in the high desert. We were really struggling to find an internet service that was reliable, and so our thought was, Let's get two different types of services. So um, if one isn't working, then we have the other one. And, you know, one's a satellite and one's a regular internet service. I started a, a business called the Joshua Tree Dream, and I am a creator of a lifestyle photography book. It was very challenging because I was getting high volumes of photography files. And then also, um, like I was getting like we transfers and I didn't have enough, you know, juice to get them to come through because my internet was so spotty. Now I just stay on the one service. A lot of people in this area struggle with internet and they just kind of give up and they think, well, I guess it is what it is. And there is a solution. Being able to come across Jack Rabbit Go was was an amazing, an amazing uh, experience because you know we were running off of a hot spot uh, for the longest time uh, and it was not ideal. The internet has been flawless. It has been very flawless. It's connected to all the devices. I'm able to monitor it, you know, from even where I'm at, you know, with our exterior cameras, and it's been a blast. It's night and day, <laughs> for sure. 
So what's happened now with the whole bead funding is they kind of leveled the playing field out. But one of the challenges we face in the state of California is to prove that wireless is the equivalent to wired, right? It's equivalent to fiber optic or cable service. With Tirana, we can keep up with the big dogs, right? The Spectrums and the Charters and some of these bigger providers we were able to compete in the state of California. And for us, that was a big difference maker because whenever you go for funding, a lot of the times they push back and say, oh, well, your technology is this, or you know, you're lacking this. It gives us a lot of confidence to be able to go to the state and say, listen, you guys don't have any excuses because the traditional excuse was, well, you know, fiber optics is so much better, so much more reliable, so much faster and all that stuff, but it's expensive and it's damaging. If you look at the area that we serve, I mean, there's nature reserves here. You can't just start digging up the street, right? And the houses are so far apart. The big teleco companies, the big providers aren't going to come out here and start wiring everything out. It's just going to cost too much money. So what's the solution? Wireless. By being able to deliver comparable, if not faster speeds and kind of wowing the community, that puts us in a really good situation to be able to get the bead funding so we can continue expanding because we certainly don't have the same resources as those other behemoths. So for us, it's, it's a big difference maker and, and a big part of our proposal for bead funding centers around Toronto's technology. So the challenge process, basically, we provided this information and said, hey, we're serving this particular area because we we're well above the FCC requirement at the time of 25 megabits download. And then what happened later on, the pendulum moved and it became 100 megabits. When that happened, we went from being the served to more underserved or unserved. What we're doing right now with the challenge process is essentially when we were able to service these particular areas that didn't have access to high-speed internet, uh, we're basically challenging ourselves because of the Toronto equipment to say, hey, listen, we're serving this area and this is our area of service. And, you know, attribute that a lot to, to Toronto. We're able to provide speeds that were unheard of before in the areas that are unheard of before. So, for example, we'll get a customers contacting us through a ticketing system and they'll put in their address and they can write a note and sometimes in their notes they say um, here's my address but we know you probably can't reach us but we wanted to try anyways and it's the best feeling in the world to be able to contact that customer and say we can reach you we're happy to provide service and not only can we reach you uh, we can reach you with a really high speed.